The first item in the building blocks of double entry system is account. Let us understand what is an account and what are the types of accounts. So this is the topic of discussion for this video. Let's look at these two topics one by one. An account is a record of transactions of similar nature. Typically, we associate the word account with our bank account. However, in accounting language, we are not referring to the word account as our bank account only. Bank account is also an account. So, what, are, what is our mental association with our bank account? Let us see. Now, bank account means that you know, there's going to be a passbook that is going to be issued to you. There is going to be an online account which you can access and, you know, you can transact through it uh, also. You can save your money in this account. You could uh, download a statement, a bank statement whenever you like. You could do analysis of the data, uh, the transactions data from your bank account as well. So that is the association we have with the bank account. Now understand what it really is, uh, is a record. It's a record that bank keeps, a record kept or maintained by the bank. Why does bank maintain this record? Because, well, this is you and this is bank. Okay, this is not look like a bank. Let me, okay, this is a bank. Let me call it bank. This is you. You go to bank and you say, I want to deposit my money. If you want to deposit your money, the bank is going to say, all right, let me, let me create. Uh, so there is a form, bank form that you fill. You fill in your name, details, how much money you want to deposit, what type of account you want, and you open your bank account, okay? And then you can go to the bank later and say, please give me, if you deposited 100, please give me 10 rupees back. And then you go again and say, please deposit 20 rupees more and so on. You do this transaction. Now, you're not the only person who does that. You know, there are uh, lakhs and crores of people who go to the bank. So bank is going to create separate record, separate record, record one, record two, record thousand and lakhs and you know uh, there are so many accounts in a in a bank so essentially an account is you know also given a unique code a unique number which is called account number right the idea is that bank should be able to uniquely identify you as an account holder and when you come to bank and you want to deposit or withdraw or uh, you know get a passbook get the passbook updated you want to know the balance uh, in your account then the bank should know which account to pull up so they have a unique id and also with this id they have associated all your transaction records all right now that's everybody knows uh, but i wanted to emphasize that all that account does is to help you maintain record of transaction record of transactions that happen between the bank and the account holder, all right? That's exactly the purpose of an account in the business. Now, business is going to create uh, an account, let's say in business, business is going to transact with so many different you know, customers. So business is going to transact with customer one, customer two, customer three. So business has to maintain an account for customer one, account of customer one, account of customer two, and account of customer three. So that there are different trans when there are different transactions with these customers, you know, this customer purchases uh, goods, let's say, purchases goods worth 100, uh, and then it pays you, pays you rupees 90, 10 is balance. It again purchases, purchase two or 50 more. Then it pays you uh, 80 rupees, let's say, right? So you need to maintain record of each customer separately. So each of this record 
in business is going to be called an account. Notice that we don't have a bank account here. It's only a paper record that we create. There is no bank account being created, but we're going to call customer one account. Possibly this is a notebook. This is a register. All right. Whenever customer one comes to the business and wants to purchase something from the business, we're going to write in this book only for customer one. Similarly, we have a register a notebook for customer two and customer three as well. So we're going to maintain it separately. All right. That's it. An account is a record which is kept, uh, you know, to note down, to memorize, uh, to be able to go back and refer to the transaction that you had with that individual, that person, or, you know, if it is not a person and can be an artificial legal person. Okay. So summarizing, uh, an account is a record of transactions of similar nature. The nature is defined by you know, this person in this case. Uh, one account for this person. It is different from bank account in the sense that uh, these accounts in the business are not bank accounts but a record that you keep for each person. Let's move forward. Uh, we know these four terms very well assets, liabilities, incomes and expenses. Now for each asset when you maintain a record you are going to call it asset account. When you maintain the record for a liability, you will call it liability account and so on. Therefore, an account could be maintained for any item and there are, you know, all items in the business. And I keep on saying items, I refer to uh, various items generated in various transactions. It will become more clear as we move forward. So, uh, an account can be created for asset, liability, income, expense. We know that asset can be of multiple types. There can be non-current assets, there can be current assets. Within non-current assets, you can have land, building, uh, you know, machinery, uh, office furniture and so on. So you can create an account for each of the types of assets that you can name. Right? So all I'm saying is, all the names of assets, liabilities, income and expenses, all types of asset, liability, income, expenses that you know, you can create a record for each of them and you can call it, you know, uh, asset account, furniture account, building account and so on. So here are some examples. So if you are, if you have stock of furniture with you, you call it furniture account, simply means furniture record, but account is a uh, convention. We use this word to refer to the record. So capital is a liability. When you maintain the record of capital, you call it capital account, sales account, salary account. So whatever the name of item uh, suffix the word account to it and you are referring to the record for that account. That is what uh, account is. Okay, let's go to types of accounts. Now the nature of accounts, we, are, we, have, we have a typology based upon nature of accounts and the first type of account is called personal account. This categorization is going to help us understand the double entry system. Please remember that. That's why we are doing this categorization. Now personal accounts, account is a record. When you maintain record for a person. And the person can be a you know, natural person, real person, or the person can be an artificial person as well. When you are maintaining records for these people, uh, then whatever account you are creating, for example, I can, I can create a person, say, Ram's account. This account is, you know, personal account in nature. All right. So that's how we, uh, you know, categorize the uh, different types of accounts first of all into personal accounts this is the first category and you can have a natural person which can be a customer's name so you can say uh, Ram's, Ram's account or you can have an artificial person's account which can be XYZ private limited private limited's account this is a company that you're dealing with and the third is a representative personal account, which means 
the account that the record that you are trying to create relates to either a natural person or an artificial person. The example of this is creditors. Creditors account. Creditors are the liabilities of business. Creditors are the vendors of business, suppliers of business to whom the money is owed by the business. So, uh, you know, this is the first type of account. If you have an account which is maintaining record of transactions with an individual who is real or artificial, or you are maintaining records for, uh, you know, an item which represents natural person, artificial person, we call such accounts as personal accounts. The word personal has nothing to do with, you know, you have your personal belongings. So uh, try to step away from the English language connotations of the word personal. It simply uh, means that you are talking about a person here, right? Okay. Let's go to the second category of accounts, which is real accounts. Again, the connotation that we have with the word real, uh, you know, something which exists and so on, that's not the intention here. Uh, just think of uh, uh, the, the three names that I will tell you, personal account, real account and the third account. These are, you know, simply some names given to categories. For example, you know, sports persons, they have a number on their uh, back, on their jersey. Sachin Tendulkar has number 10 written. Uh, does not, you know, that 10 would have some value for that cricketer, but for us, when we see number 10, we know who the person is. But that number 10 in counting would mean that 10 is greater than uh, 9 and, you know, less than 11. But it does not matter. Uh, it does not mean that another cricketer who has number 9 written, uh, you know, is an inferior player to somebody who has written 99 on his jersey, right? So, these names are just representative. They don't necessarily mean, uh, you know, in literate sense uh, uh, of, you know, what their uh, words, the words being used. So, in real account, you have tangible real accounts and you have intangible real accounts. This means... The, uh, the items which you can see and feel uh, if you are creating an account for that for example all your assets right furniture building land all of that can be seen and your intellectual property ip if you are creating uh, a record for that that is going to be an intangible real account so effectively uh, if you are creating uh, an account for an asset that is going to be uh, called a real account in nature okay Finally, you have nominal accounts. Again, as I said, do not go by the English language meaning of nominal. It has nothing to do with, uh, you know, which accounts are classified as nominal. All that you need to uh, know is that all incomes and all expenses are categorized as nominal accounts. So you have incomes and there, there can possibly be gains as well, expenses and losses. And you have all the assets here, which can be real account. And you have all the liabilities, liabilities here, which are personal account. So we know four terms, assets, assets, liabilities, incomes and expenses. So there you go. All assets are real account. All liabilities are personal accounts. All incomes and expenses are nominal accounts. One more time, the words personal, real, nominal, do not interpret them as per their English language. You could also memorize this categorization by saying, let me call it category 1, 2, 1, 3. It does not matter. Uh, the idea is that there is going to be some, there are going to be some rules of double entry system based upon this categorization, which we need to learn. So we need to categorize these. So category 1, 2, 3, good to go. I'll see you in the next video.